And our next story is, I think, the most important story that virtually nobody is talking about. And just looking over, I was only able to find the story on a handful of sites, and two of them were specifically sites that do news about abortion and the issue of life. And one of the other ones was just a conservative news site. I have not seen any reporting on this anywhere in the mainstream media. Now, maybe they've posted something, and I'm incorrect on that. And, and if you find something from, I don't know, the, the Hill, WAPO, The Guardian, The New York Times, something like that, you know, I'm, I'm willing to correct myself. That's fine. I'm just saying that as of this reading, I couldn't find anything about this from any of the mainstream news sites. So this is uh, sort of a response. In fact, it's the court proceeding that came out of the story that you remember broke a couple of years ago about Planned Parenthood selling baby parts. And they were doing so specifically to a company known as Stem Express. So this past week, in court hearings, Stem Express admitted to Planned Parenthood selling them harvested baby parts. And remember, this was all taking place in a courtroom under oath. That's the context in which this occurs. You may remember that CMP, in other words, the, the Center for Medical Progress, the group of people that did the undercover sting video that unearthed this thing, that unearthed this uh, scandal taking place within the walls of Planned Parenthood. They did that video where Planned Parenthood was caught admitting to harvesting parts illegally and doing so specifically for profit. So that's what was going on here, and that's illegal for two different reasons. First of all, it is illegal to alter procedure for any reason other than the patient's well-being. So when you're talking about an abortion, there are laws in place that if you alter the procedure in any way, and that alteration of procedure is not being done for the well-being of the patient, in this case the mother, because of course they don't consider the child a human being, if they alter the procedure to be able to harvest the, the baby in order to make money off of it, that is a very clear violation. And so that's the first law that's being broken. The second is that it is illegal to transport body parts for medical use across state lines. And so they were actually moving this stuff from one state to an, the other, and they were able to prove that this was uh, occurring in some of the cases. I don't think all of the cases, but in some of the cases that they did the sting videos. And so even if the altering procedure had not been taking place, simply moving the part from one state to the other without proper or, uh, authorization or a proper license, that is a violation of federal law as well. So you're dealing with two violations of law that potentially come out of this court case. And getting off of the legal side of it for just a second, let's just go right to logic and ration here. Here's one thing that I find fascinating about it, because we're so used to, in the pro-choice side of this, we're, we're so used to hearing, well, it's not a baby, it's not a human. And that's the justification for it. We say, no, it is a human life. And they'll say, no, no, it's, it's not a baby, it's not human. If it's not human, why is Planned Parenthood selling the parts for medical research? That's the thing that sticks in my craw about all this. Because if it's not human, then why not use a rat? They're paying an awful lot of money and going to an awful lot of trouble to do experiments on something for it not being human. Because if they just needed something that wasn't human, that didn't have human DNA and human body parts, which of course we know if we're talking about an unborn child, of course they do. If it's not human, which is central to Planned Parenthood's argument of why abortion should be allowed, why are they selling the parts? To do research to benefit humans because the baby is what? A human baby who, biologically speaking, is far more similar to a adult human or any human that would need medical care that would benefit from this research. They are far more genetically and biologically similar to a human being than animals would be, which is the reason they're willing to pay 
so much and, and to sell these parts the way that they are. So just a little food for thought there. So th this is coming directly from Live Action, which was one of the sites that I saw reporting on this. Quote, the CEO of STEM Ex Express took the stand on Thursday in the preliminary hearing against the Center for Medical Progress. Investigators David Dalen and Sarah Merritt, according to CMP, she admitted in court that when a fetal brain is harvested, the head may still be attached to the body and that STEM Express does indeed harvest and supply fully intact aborted children because using feticide, such as uh, di uh, digoxin, damages the specimens. These children had the potential of being born alive. So there's a couple things to note about this. This uh, feticide, in other words, the, the chemical that they inject into the baby to kill it, if that is not put in there, there is the potential for the child to actually be born alive and then they kill it, which is illegal on a number of different levels because then you're dealing with a preemie outside of the womb. And as ridiculous as it is to make the womb and whether you're in it or not, the dividing line of whether or not something is a human or something is protected or not, as ridiculous a standard as that is, they're very clearly violating even that standard if they are engaged in the procedure this way. Because then they're basically just inducing birth, and once the baby is born outside and living on its own, then they're killing it. And the reason that they're doing it is so that they can preserve the child for experimentation. And by the way, you want to talk about exploiting women? These women were not receiving money that Planned Parenthood was for the experimentation on their baby. Now, as sick and twisted as it would be to sell off your child for human experimentation, it still would stand to reason that Planned Parenthood doesn't have an awful lot of room to talk when they talk about women's rights and equal pay and all that stuff when you're literally taking, even if you view it as a part of the woman's body, a part of her body away and then using the money to fill your own coffers. And this pokes a pretty big hole in the lie that abortion is all about women's health, that Planned Parenthood is all about women's health. Because if the health of the woman is the number one primary concern, you would never alter the procedure in any way that might make it more dangerous, less likely to be successful, in such a way just to make money. And that's exactly what Planned Parenthood has admitted to, be, to having done. It's the CEO of STEM Express saying that that's how they were delivered. So we have confirmation that Planned Parenthood was indeed altering procedure, putting the health of the money, or sorry, the health of the mother on the sideline for profit. Pokes a pretty big hole in that lie that they've been peddling for years that their primary concern is women's health. So let's look uh, at, at another part of this article. That is an especially gruesome admission, but it begs the question, how did they get these fully intact human children? Peter Breen of the Thomas More Society, which is representing Dalen, one of the guys that did the sting operation, uh, representing Dalen at the hearing, told LifeSite News, if you have a fetus with an intact head and an intact body and intact extremities, that is something that would indicate the child was born alive and then had their organs cut out of them, or that the child was the victim of an illegal partial birth abortion. Both of these are gruesome and violent acts. Yeah. So what you've got here is two options. If they actually are having intact specimens that are not pulled apart, that are, are still in one piece, if that is taking place, that really leaves you with only two options. Either you're doing a partial birth abortion, in other words, you're inducing labor, and then before the head gets outside the birth canal, you're, and yes, this is gross, but it's the cruel reality of what abortion is, jabbing a pair of scissors into the back of its head and then extracting it after it dies, or even more disturbing, if you can even get more disturbing than that, that they're actually inducing labor bringing the child out of the womb, and then killing it once it's out, like I just described. 
either way, highly illegal. And by the way, even for the pro-choice movement, against what most of them would consider a good practice when it comes to abortion. Remember that only 13% of Americans, left and right, believe that third trimester abortions should be allowed. Where do you think they would stand on this? The baby actually being born and then killed. But that seems to be what is going on here based on their explanation, which, by the way, all happened under oath in court. Basically, what was going on here is they were performing a birth and then killing the child. They also had Holly O'Donnell, who worked for STEM Express, talk about how they would have babies born alive to harvest fresh organs. So what they were doing here is the fresher the organ, the more viable it is, the, the less likely you're going to have an organ that's dead, the more valuable that tissue is. The same is true even for adult humans, that if you're doing some kind of medical experimentation, it's much better to have a body that hasn't had to be preserved, that has been, uh, that his, the person has deceased just a very short time ago to where the organs still have life in them. And here's a person that actually works for STEM Express attesting to this having happened. That this was something that they were receiving. Further lending credibility to the idea that Planned Parenthood and STEM Express broke the law. A witness took the stand Thursday and confirmed intact fetuses were supplied by STEM Express for research purposes. So we have Holly O'Donnell, we have the CEO of, of STEM Express... And then we have another witness that is also confirming this. And that same witness also confirmed that the documents STEM Express testified to Congress were forged, were in fact real. And by the way, presumably, granted we don't know a whole lot about this witness yet, but presumably this witness is a person that worked for STEM Express and hasn't flipped or turned on them, that they're still on the pro-choice side but had to admit when asked about these documents, when they were asked directly and put under oath, they had to say, yeah, those weren't forged, those are real. And these are the order forms that you remember came out several months ago that showed and proved that STEM Express was purchasing from Planned Parenthood and that they were engaged in this practice. And one of those order forms specifically says, fully intact which would mean that this is just further evidence that what was happening is that Planned Parenthood was either inducing labor or doing partial birth abortions to present a fully intact baby to STEM Express because that was what they were requesting. And what's even more amazing about this is on that same request, it says same-day delivery, further giving credibility to the witness testimony that we now have that they were doing this basically on a rush, it was being delivered the same day, and they were ignoring inducing the, uh, the infanticide, the, the feticide, the poison that they were putting in the child. They were not doing that and altering the procedure so that they could arrive fresh. I mean, this really does read like some kind of science fiction nightmare, but that's what Planned Parenthood is. So now I want you to put all these pieces together. We have the court testimony that I just told you about, corroborated by several witnesses, all under oath. And you'll remember that this whole thing started when we had video of Planned Parenthood executives talking about it and admitting to it on video in their own words. So we've got the sellers admitting to selling the babies. We've got the buyers now admitting to having bought the babies. And this is corroborated by several different witnesses, by different documents, different orders. There's a paper trail. All of this evidence stacked up to show that this is what was actually taking place. And somehow this is going to be dismissed by many on the left as A, not newsworthy, and B, some kind of right-wing hoax. What more could you ask for? Just say in your own mind, let's just say this were happening, whether it was or not. Let's just say as a scenario that it was happening. What would you say is the threshold that you would have to meet to prove in your mind, okay, it, it did actually happen? 
Because if we're seeing all of this and a person is still denying that it's happening, you can pretty much say with the surety that that person, if you had them sit down and watch it take place, they still wouldn't believe that it was happening. They are immune to facts at this point. There is nothing you can say that would convince them otherwise. But that is what is so tragic about the situation that we're in now, that these people are so desperate to continue to cling on to the right to murder their own children that they will ignore basic facts in front of them. Look, on this issue, you don't have to be pro-life. I think that you should be. I've made arguments for that in the past. But on this particular story, you do not have to be pro-life to be angry with Planned Parenthood about this. You remember that horror show that happened a few years ago with the abortion clinic that was being run by Kermit Gosnell, where the guy was doing all kinds of things that A, put women in danger, and B, were just, you know, absolutely sick and disgusting, like keeping baby parts in jars. We have the disgusting factor and we have the illegal factor, both present, just like in the Kermit Gosnell case, right here in the Planned Parenthood case. Even if you're pro-choice, even if you believe that abortion is a constitutional right and that anybody that tries to take that away from you is wrong, even if you're on that side of the argument, you can still look at this and say, yeah, what Planned Parenthood was doing was wrong. What Planned Parenthood did put women's lives at risk. Even if you just care about the woman, could care less about the child. You can still look at this and say, Planned Parenthood ought to pay for this. In the same way that a good police officer looks at a dirty cop and says, I am more upset at this person because he gives cops a bad rep. The pro-abortion side should be the ones that are ringing the warning sign or ringing the bells and flashing the warning signs more than anybody else on this because it's such useful ammo politically for people that oppose abortion like myself. And yet the left seems to be just completely ignoring it, not saying anything, turning the other way because they know it makes their side look like what it actually is. A barbaric evil practice that murders children for the sake of convenience. <laughs> Hey, y'all know I'm a stats and numbers guy, so here's some fun facts for you. People that subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel are 200% more satisfied with their online video content and 400% more likely to be able to speak intelligently about politics and religion with somebody they know. Also, four out of five people that subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel live healthier, more fulfilling lives. And that fifth guy was just a social justice warrior with a stick up his butt. Also, 82% of the statistics on the internet, totally made up.